In this Eye in the Sky package, we'll delve into the Bobcats' success as well as their vulnerability along the defensive line as shown in their 27-17 win over Sacramento State last Saturday. The successful part was easy to see even in the box score as MSU logged six sacks on the day. But the Bobcats also had some good success stopping the run because of the nice packages they put together up front. And we'll examine uh, one, one example of that as well. But uh, the day wasn't all glitz and glamour for MSU, um, especially on the defensive line. For the second week in a row, a team found some success using MSU's speed and aggressive pursuit upfield on the defensive line against them with some delay plays. But, but first and foremost, let's example one of the sacks against Sacramento State, and we'll kind of see how it was made possible. I'll cut to the, j uh, to the chase here. It was uh, because of Dane Fletcher. The Bobcats Buchanan candidate at, at defensive end is lined up at the bottom of your screen on this particular play, and he's about to make the Hornets left tackle look pretty silly. As we roll it here, you'll see the tight end on this side of the field go out on a route, which uh, leaves Sacramento's uh, uh, tackle one-on-one -on -one with Fletcher. As we continue to roll it here, we see Dane Fletcher use his agility to win this matchup, going uh, with a perfectly executed swim move back to the inside of the offensive lineman. Now, Fletcher doesn't get the sack on this play, but he slows Hornet quarterback McLeod Bethel Thompson enough that the other two motoring linemen on, on the other side of, of the play, in Dan Ogden and Zach, uh, Zach Minter, who both use excellent rip moves to get free of their blocks, are able to pursue down the line and make the play here, which is the sack on, on Bethel Thompson. This is a classic example of a play that doesn't show up on the stat sheet. Fletcher gets no credit for forcing the quarterback into a tough spot, but this play never happens if it wasn't for the senior from Bozeman. On this particular example, we'll look at how a double linebacker blitz from MSU that attacks the right side of the Hornet line really blows up this play. This one's a little tougher to see with the jumbled mess along the far side of that line, so pay attention closely here. You're going to see essentially three Bobcats come into, uh, into effect on this particular play, one of which is, is once again Dane Fletcher, who's lined up at the end on the far side of this play. The other is Dan Ogden, who is lined up over the right guard for, uh, for the Hornets. And the third is Matt Harris, the outside linebacker, up in that same vicinity. As we kick it off here, you'll see that the Hornets want uh, the wide receiver that they sent in motion to help at the point of attack, which is right over that right guard. You'll eventually see he does a nice job of teaming up with the tight end on that far side to double-team Fletcher and kind of take him out of the picture. But that's really of little use because the, the tackle and guard on that same side, the right side, are, are left to contend with an array of oncoming uh, defenders. Originally, the guard picks up Ogden. But as he sees Matt Harris coming in, he, uh, he, comes, uh, he comes off the block and picks up Harris. That uh, leaves room for Ogden to roll up field and uh, stop Hornet running back Jeff Badger in the backfield. Uh, effective use of pressure here by MSU, and um, it really results in a negative play for Sacramento State. And finally, as promised, we'll examine a play where MSU's relentless pursuits along the defensive front was used against them. This particular play was a critical one. It's the halfback pass from Jake Croxdale to Sacramento State tight end Brian Heath that tied the score at 14 going into the half. The two key players to watch here just happen to be two true freshmen for MSU, safety Joel Fuller and corner Darius Jones. As we roll this one here, you'll see the pitch go out to Croxdale. You'll also see the big uh, Hornet fullback come out to lead block for him and Heath who's the tight end on the near side here, slide over to seemingly block MSU linebacker Jody Owens. Now before we continue, it has to be noted that Fuller and Jones are in great position currently as both are still behind the play while continuing to aggressively pursue the ball. However, as we continue, we're going to see both young defensive backs make mistakes. We'll just roll it a little bit here and you'll see Fuller get sucked up in the middle, into the middle of this play. As the safety responsible for the far side of the end zone, you're not going to be able to fulfill that responsibility should the tight end Heath decide to stop and give you a good shove. He's also not in a great angle to attack the runner at this point in time. So as of now, Fuller has really essentially been eliminated from the play. But now, uh, now turn your attention to Jones. At this point in time, he needs to recognize Heath coming off the block and trust his teammates a little bit more. Jones needs to either recognize um, that he needs to take on Heath as a blocker or stay 